ladles and jelly spoons. Welcome back to Badgerworks. Today, power. Uh, today we're going to look at something uh, that is of interest, I think it's going to be of interest to a lot of people. Um, we're going to look at how to build a rechargeable power circuit. Now why would we want a rechargeable system? Well obviously we could just use normal batteries, but the trouble is if you build something like a model, uh, and you want it and you put batteries inside it, you need to have a way to get in to get the batteries out to change them or recharge them uh, which obviously is not simple so what I do in these situations is I tend to use a rechargeable system um, because it means instead of having to take something apart to get the batteries out you can just plug it in and charge the battery so we're going to have a look at some of the components that we're going to use how they go together and then a couple of applications where I've used these lighting rigs in the past. So to start with, we've got here a battery. Um, this is a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. Um, you can get them on eBay, they're very cheap. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, this one is a 1200 milliamp power, so it will last a reasonable while um, powering small devices. Uh, it's a fairly large size for this kind of battery. I mean you can get ones that the size of a penny, they're absolutely minute. Um, they also come with lots of different ends on them. Um, they're, they're, a lot of these are designed for use in quad rotors and little drones and things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to use for our power source. This is a rechargeable battery, as I say, it's lithium polymer. Now we need to charge it up, so how do we do that? Well, the simplest way is to use one of these. Now this is a 5 volt USB charging circuit and the way it works is very very simple. You have a micro USB on the end here. You have, um, there are, I'm not going to go through all of the components, but you've got a microcontroller that is controlling the whole thing. Um, you've got voltage regulators and so on and so forth. You've got here at this end, this is the important bit, You've got connections for the battery, and you've got connections for whatever you want to actually power. You've also got on here two tiny little LEDs, and they are the charging status. There's a blue one and a red one. Uh, when it's charging, the red light is on. When it's charged, the blue light comes on. Now, you can use this to charge any battery up to 5 volts, really. Um, so, for example, we've got this battery here, which is 3.7 volts. Uh, you could also use it to charge a single 18650 battery. But that's what we're going to use. One of the interesting things with this as well, and I'll go over that in a bit more, in a bit more detail later, it also has, as well as the USB port, it has power in plus and minus over here. And this means that if, for example, you wanted to put this somewhere where you couldn't get to it from the outside, you can actually run wires from here to actually bring power to this charger. So, for example, I've got here another little bit of kit. This is something I made myself, but you can buy them. This is basically a micro USB uh, socket, but it's only got the power pins connected, and there are two little tabs of copper there. It's a little tiny circuit board. So, for example, you could put this, you could put this anywhere, put that somewhere else, and run wires between the two and you could plug your USB cable in there and it would still power this. So, we're not going to do that today but I just wanted to give you the idea. This is how the, the charging circuits are made. Um, I mean they're made in big circuit boards and then they, they break them off. Um, this is how I buy them. Uh, there are nine here obviously. Um, but yeah, so when you want one you just break it off and use it. We're also going to need a switch. This is a absolutely bog standard on-off toggle switch. Uh, so we'll be using that. And our actual light is going to be this. This is just an LED. Now this one is pre-wired as you can see. And I've chosen this one for a reason. This is actually a 12 volt. This is wired for 12 volt. It has a resistor already attached that allows this to plug straight into a 12 volt circuit and work perfectly. Now you might say, well we're not using 12 volts, we're using 3.7 volts. Yes we are, but 3.7 volts will still power this quite nicely. 
what it does, it means it won't be as bright as it would be if it was running 12 volts. Uh, which is handy if you wanted to light um, a model or something, because obviously LEDs can be really, really bright. And sometimes you don't want them that bright. So this is a good way to just reduce the output. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder all these components together and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at it in a minute when it's done. Back in a bit. Okay, so what I've done here um, is I've connected the battery to the battery plus and minus. I've connected the LED to the plus and minus on the out side of the charger. And I've also added this little switch in the middle just to um, allow us to turn it on and off easily. So now if I turn this on, we have a light. All seems fairly straightforward. It's running off the battery. Lovely. Um, if we need to charge the battery, all we do is take a USB lead um, connected to a suitable power supply. So the same. this is exactly the same as you'd use to charge your phone or anything like that. Plug it in, turn on the power, and we see there the red light comes on to show it's charging. When the battery is fully charged, the light will turn blue. But now we can have our light on. Um, I mean, for one light like this, this battery will last for hours. Um, so depending on what you want to do, you can uh, you can use this thing for a long time. But the nice thing is, it means that you can put all this inside whatever your project is and you don't need to worry about taking it apart to recharge the batteries. So for example, um, I've got here, this is a fibre optic uh, thread, or fibre optic cable. Um, this came out of a toy that uh, I salvaged. And it's basically a bundle of plastic fibres. They're, they're glued together. Um, will I actually show you that or not? Focus. Hello. He actually wants to focus on it. There we go. Um, so you can see that the cables are all bundled together and then they're hot glued together. But I wanted to try and show you how this works. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. So if I turn the light on and I shine it in the end, you can see the ends of the fibre optic cables light up. So you, can, you could light your whole model if you had something like, uh, I don't know, a starship or you know a plane or something that's got lots of windows. You could light the whole thing basically with one LED. So you just run one of these to each window or to each porthole or whatever you're going to do. Um, and off it goes. So, yeah, I'll give you a couple of uh, things that I've made where I've used things like this. So, for example, the first thing here is uh, this data knife. Now, you might have seen, uh, I did a video on this before. Um, but what we've got here is there's a, 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 a one watt epistar diode in the end, and there's an LED in the side. And when you press the button, they light up. Now, the, ha the battery is inside the handle. Now this does actually have a battery cover, but I don't really want to have to go in there and change the batteries. So what I've done is on the end here, if you look, I don't know if you can actually see that or not, if the thing will actually focus, there we go. Um, we've got here a USB port, and I can plug this into a USB charger and charge the battery without taking the thing apart. To give you a bit more of an idea, um, I'll show you something else that I've made. Now. Let's just move all this to one side for a moment. This is um, the seer kit I made for my son. You may, again, you may have seen the video. Um, this is from the video game Titanfall 2. Um, and it's designed, it's obviously not as big as, it, as the real one would be. This is 3D printed. My friend designed it, I printed it. And this has got various bits and pieces of electronics inside it. Um, so if I switch it on, you see you've got a rocker switch on the back there. If I turn it on, You've got lights in the front, and it also to pilot. You're all linked. has sound. So I can actually show you the inside of this. The front's held on with magnets. So if I pull the front off, I, I, I should say this is a bit of a rat's nest in here because this was a prototype. Um, 
Uh, so this is the inside of it. Uh, as you can see, we've got... This is the sound card. This is what plays all the sounds. And I'm going to cover this in a different video. Um, we've got another Epistar diode here. Uh, provides the lights. We've got uh, a speaker here. And in the back there, you can see, there's the battery. Uh, there's all of the uh, connectors for the switches. And down here... I don't know whether you can actually see that is the charging circuit right in the back there. Now, if I just pop the front back on and turn it over, now you can see there, there's the charging circuit. And basically, what I've also done with this, if I just take this cable out of here and plug it in here. And you can see there's a red light. So what I've done is I've used some fiber optic cable to transfer the charging lights from the board to the side of the case. But the nice thing is it means now that if ever this needs charging up, all you've got to do is plug in uh, a USB cable. I and mean, this at the moment is actually plugged into um, a phone charger. So it means that you don't have to mess about changing batteries or anything like that. So just to go over this again, we've got the charging circuit, we've got the switch, we've got the light, and we've got the battery. All of this can be put inside your project, whether it's um, something like the things I've shown you, or a model, or anything like that. Um, this will actually power quite a lot. Um, and as we saw in the SEER kit, I mean, there are, there are two LEDs, there's an Epistar diode, there's a sound card, speaker, and that's all running off of one of the 3.7 volt batteries. Um, so you can do a lot with it. Uh, I haven't actually had to charge that SEER kit since I made it. So, yeah, it works really well. So here we have it, the, uh, the charging circuit. Uh, I hope this is something that will be of use to you in your projects. Um, it's certainly very useful for me. I, I've used things like this all the time. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.